Video link. Daisy Cooper. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. The pandemic has generated unprecedented financial demands on this government. But time and time again, the government has drawn a red line when it comes to supporting children and young people. The former Children's Commissioner, Anne Longfield, calls it an institutional bias against children. While Sir Kevin Collins has, to, has today described the government's response as feeble. So when will this Conservative government wake up and realise that, that it is failing an entire generation of young people? Let's start with those living in poverty. Some of the poorest families had to fight this government to get free school meals during holidays, not just once, but twice. Children living in digital poverty had to wait months and months to get a digital device because the DfE couldn't get its act together. Then after receiving independent advice from Sir Kevin Collins that the government needed to spend 15 billion on edu educational catch up, the government committed just a tenth of that. Just last week, the government confirmed that it would go ahead with a planned cut of some 90 million pounds to people premium funding, funding that helps the most disadvantaged children. Mr Deputy Speaker, this is not levelling up. It's a crushing blow. So why is this government ignoring its own education advisers? When will it commit to a serious catch-up package? And when will it take child poverty seriously? Let's turn to school budgets more broadly. I welcome the fact that the starting salaries for newly qualified teachers will increase to £30,000 by 2022. But schools are being asked to meet these costs from within their already overstretched school budgets. One school in my constituency of St Albans tells me that 91% of their budget is already committed to staff salaries at the existing levels. Simply put, they need more funding to pay staff what they deserve whilst still investing in other areas of the school. We already know that the increased work pressure on school staff is leading to a retention crisis and a real fear of burnout. So what will the government do to address the chronic shortfall in schools funding? And finally, I'd like to turn to the current COVID crisis in schools. COVID related pupil absence in state schools has skyrocketed. 375,000 pupils, about one in 20 children, are out of school for COVID related reasons. That's the highest rate since schools fully reopened in March of this year. That is why today I am calling on the government to establish a rapid task force with a mandate to keep schools open safely. That task force, if set up today, should do its work in July, produce guidance by the end of July, and then give school leaders time at the start of term in September to get measures in place before bringing children back. If the government simply says that it's done with bubbles and self-isolation, then transmission rates could go through the roof, opening us up to the risk of new variants. So that is not the answer. Instead, we need ventilation, we need testing, we need contact tracing, we need face coverings and a review of bubble sizes to make them as small as possible. The Association of Directors of Public Health have already indicated that it too wants to see a root and branch reform of the current measures. And if asked by the government, I'm sure they would move heaven and earth to help the government do this. I would like to see the Secretary of State make sure that children do not lose out on any more valuable time. So I'm, so I'm asking today if the government will make a commitment that they will set up a rapid task force with directors of public health to put a proper plan and funding in place to keep our schools open safely. Thank you. Much.